Good afternoon, good morning, good night. Welcome to our AI Green Lab. I am so excited to be hosting this AI Green Lab session from New Providence. And I am right now in the American corner at the Harry Seymour Library at the University of the Bahamas. And we are so excited to be part of this hybrid session. We have a really awesome uh, program lined up for you today. So if you are with us in Zoom land, welcome, welcome. If you are with us in the American corner, we are so excited to have you here. And I really just want to turn the floor over to Abby. I know you have a lot of updates to give us and to set the stage before we welcome our guest speaker to tonight's session. So with that, um, Abby, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Nikita. Can you hear me? Is my uh, audio yeah. good? We got you. Perfect. Excellent. Thank you. So hello, everyone. Uh, welcome and uh, greetings to you all. Uh, welcome to the AI Green Lab webinar series and workshops on uh, artificial intelligence and smart development. My name is Abhi Shumadlis, uh, joining you here live from Addis Ababa, uh, Ethiopia. I'm uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm a community builder and social innovator specializing in sustainability and tech governance. Uh, anything in the nexus between sustainable development and technology, that's my fascination. And I'm glad I'm joined here with other people who are here joining us who are curious about um, AI and how it applies for social innovation, sustainable development. And I'm glad that we're here gathered as a global community uh, that is curious to explore the power of AI, but also not just about building our skills around AI, but also being um, uh, having the critical lens to uh, explore its various uh, challenges and also opportunities, right? Uh, so that's, that's um, the, as we say always in these sessions, uh, the AI Green Lab is all about AI for the green, the blue, and the good. So that's the spirit of it all. Uh, so we'd like to thank um, uh, the Young Marine Explorers team, YME Bahamas, the UNESCO National, um, uh, the US, the UNESCO National, um, uh, sorry, the, the UNESCO National Commission, I'm sorry on that, uh, of the Bahamas for availing and powering this important conversation. And also today, uh, as a new approach, uh, beyond the last sessions, we have a new space. We are having a hybrid uh, conversation today at the American Corner at the University of Bahamas. Thank you for availing that space. It's wonderful. We're always slowly improving the way we're uh, having these uh, conversations and with the aid of technology, um, it's going good. And yeah, uh, right now it's Friday morning, early morning here in Addis. It's actually 2, uh, 2 37 a.m. with uh, Nathanael, uh, for Nathanael and I here in Addis. So it's good, but we're still having this conversation with the power of technology. So yeah, irrespective of where you are, uh, what your background is, what your education background is, uh, what you do or what your interests are, everyone is welcome here. It's, um, sorry if you can see my, okay, let me just go to the first slide, yeah. Mm -hmm. So for those of you who are joining us uh, for the first time, feel free to invite a friend. You can uh, share them the link that we've shared on the chat box even if it's a last minute, or if not, they can just uh, join us uh, the recordings of this video. All the sessions are recorded. Uh, you can go to the YME uh, Bahamas uh, YouTube channel and you can see the pre uh, the recording the recorded videos. Uh, you can also feel free to introduce yourselves on the chat, drop your name and uh, where you come from, uh, your organization. It would be a nice way to, don't be shy. It would be a nice way to get to know each other quickly. And last, uh, just as a point of information, if you're still not in the WhatsApp group of the AI Green Lab, it would be a nice way to connect if you can just join on the link provided on the chat box. 
uh, so that we can keep each other posted on upcoming sessions and uh, reading materials and and as we build this community further, right? So that's just a point of information. So yeah, so far we, over the last uh, four sessions, we've been talking about what intelligence is, what is AI, how it impacts in social, uh, its social impacts, its risks, its risks opportunities, uh, practical applications and future um, opportunities of AI um in two different parts and today we are re talking about exploring ai tools to support everyday tasks we'll dive deeper into it later on uh but overall of course we we've been also um we've been uh, bringing different uh young bahamians from different parts uh, of 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 bahamas uh and uh, and uh, particularly cat island as our learning island it's been a nice way to beyond the virtual sessions we've had the opportunity to come together uh, and discuss what it really means what we really want to solve uh, as our everyday tasks and how technology and ai can actually um, supplement these tasks so beyond as you know the 21st century requires us our deeper understanding of two things, the sustainable development goals and also the digital transformation that's happening uh, in all walks and uh, aspects of life. So it's really important to understand the, the, the nexus between these two. Um, and in addition, we, we also invite guest speakers to share with us some of their knowledge uh, and, and experiences in the subject and their interest is. You don't have to be a techie to join these uh, conversations. I'm not coming from tech background, but still um, uh, coming from an engineering background just at the same time and also interested in sustainability. I find these conversations very fascinating. So for today's session, uh, as we explore AI tools to support everyday tasks, uh, we're gonna go through three uh, major segments of this uh, conversation. The, the first is I will kind of allow me to kind of frame a little about the evolution of learning today. We're going to dive into that thematics because that's a very important uh, understanding we need to go through together before uh, we go into our guest speakers. Um, uh, the knowledge nugget is going to share with us today. And that's uh, that's one. And the second thing is I'm going to be giving a few sneak peek on the AI Green Lab debate contest that we're cooking, uh, which is going to be happening somewhere on mid-February. We're going to announce the exact dates and the details about it. Uh, it's a part of our way to engage the university community. Anyone who's watching this, uh, this conversation online, uh, the opportunity to uh, develop critical thinking and arguments uh, around progressive AI and also conservative AI. There's no right and wrong. We just want people to have more co open conversations around these subjects and make it a bit closer to our uh, everyday tasks as individuals, as organization leaders, as community leaders. Uh, so that's the whole point of the uh, debate content, which is going to be the culmination of all of this uh, at the end of the day. So, and last, uh, and the good part, which I'm very excited, is our guest speaker for today and the question and answers to follow. But before that, as I mentioned, it, allow me to just Evolution. stir up a bit like a... Hello? Oh, yeah, Anthony's. Okay. I thought that was my echo. All right. So on the evolution of learning, um, in, it's... So as in the previous sessions, we we have been talking a lot about what intelligence is, right? And how, what is data? And uh, how does AI really work? How, what has really changed this time? Is it really just a new technology um, that is being hyped up? Or are we really diving into a new form of um, industrial revolution? if you might say. 
So in order to, to just give a context on that, it's important to see how human beings have been learning over the past, um, uh, you know, throughout uh, our evolution or uh, since we have been coming together as a community. So the first has been the observational learning uh, in early humans. Uh, this has been in, uh, seen through different scientific ar ar archaeological findings whether if you if you go through uh, ancient civilization studies you'll uh, find you'll find the the presence of also oral traditions and storytelling basically this is how we've been uh, laying laying passing over information to through different generations um Usually, oral tradition and storytelling has a lot to do with passing down um, traditions and stories of you know how how you came into this uh, it might be how you came into this world or uh, your future aspirations or legends that keep a community together. So many things, but slowly we've uh, managed to put those things into written language and formal education. And this usually has to do with um, civilizations now putting those traditions and observations into writing so that they can pass it down through generation. Uh, slowly that uh, progress shifted into uh, printed books and mass uh, education, especially around the 14th, 15th century. Um, and then you have the the Johannes Gutenberg and the printing press. Uh, usually it's associated in history as that time period in which human beings started to now preserve those written materials and now mass distribute them to a wide range of uh, audience. And slowly that came to a, a more familiar now age that we can all associate maybe the industrial age and the memory based memorization based education as some of them uh, call it um so uh, it, ha it has a lot to do with standardizing education and also memorizing things crumbing up things into our head and trying to serve a particular standardized industry need and that slowly shifted into the digital age now allowing more um, uh, alternatives in e-learning, multimedia contents or interactive educational softwares, which now increases the availability of um, these contents to be to be to be accessible to a wide range of audiences as well. But now, our interest in the AI Green Lab conversation has a lot to do with the um, now the AI assisted learning that um, that we're in in this 21st century, which is characterized by individual learning styles, uh, customization of your learning, and also pro providing real time feedback on 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 a more conversant based uh, language based learning language model based learning prediction based uh, learning of these uh, algorithms predicting what you most likely want to search or like you know there's a lot of applications on that uh, but ideally what i want to show here is uh, the how far we have come into uh, into changing the way we learn that is at the foundation of understanding exactly is this just a hype about a new technology or um how are we understanding how we learn and then better prepare and position ourselves to 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 understand um uh, how ai can assist our learning process and our creativity and all that so that's really the evolution of learning i wanted to walk through and also, I mean, these things are, of course, our guest speaker, there's a lot that he's going to share with us about uh, the tools. Uh, but it's just to just say, to appreciate this evolution and the progress uh, we've made as humanity. And then now, the, the if understanding how we learn 
could better understand how we use the technology. And also on the contrary, the lack of that understanding could also have its own unintended consequences. So having said that, let me just uh, pause here. As you can see, uh, yes, you might ask ChatGPT to do a few things, uh, but of course there are certain skills that eventually um, that are irreplaceable. And having that clear understanding between the, the limitations between these technologies and also what, what they're really good at could allow us to really tap into the full potential of these uh, technologies. I won't go into the details of um, some of these things, but before that, let me just uh, introduce uh, our guest speaker for today, uh, Nat Nair. So I'll just... Uh, now, just to, so the previous presentation was just really to give a framework of some of the conversations we've been having and also um, emphasize on the, the understanding of how human beings learn. And I'm glad to have with us today, uh, Nathanael Mogus. Uh, he's a seasoned software engineer with a proven track record of success in Ethiopia's tech industry. Uh, he's passionate about using his skills to build innovative solutions that address uh, real world challenges. He is currently the uh, chief technology officer for FUE Gela, which is a startup accelerator that helps entrepreneurs bring um, uh, their ideas to life. He's also the co-founder of the Ethiopian Gamers Association, uh, an organization that promotes game thinking for enhancing problem solving skills. And I think he's gonna share with us what that really means. So his company also is involved in the business of understanding uh, game thinking to solve real world challenges. So over the next uh, 20 to 30 minutes, uh, we'll just allow uh, him to share his thoughts and also some practical applications of AI as we jointly explore AI tools for everyday tasks. Uh, it could be for AI for communication, text generation, AI for data-driven action, uh, for number crunchers, or it could be AI for arts, culture, heritage, for the artistic, the, uh, the musicians, or anyone who's interested in that uh, track of work. So it's uh, all about bringing AI a bit closer to us as individuals and the work that we do. So with that uh, note, I'll uh, hand over the floor to Nathanael. Uh, thank you, Nathanael. Thank you, Abi. Uh, hi, everyone. Hey, hello. Hi, hi, hi. This is this is very exciting. Uh, so just to introduce myself, as as Abi said, uh, yep, yeah, yes, I did take. Um, I I yes, I graduated from software engineering. I've been doing that for a couple of years. Um, the past few years I've been engaged in gamification and game design. I've been trying to use uh, the elements of games to have some kind of, uh, to help out in the youth engagement sector. Um, I've been trying to use games to, to teach about agriculture or to create more fluid communication with uh, farmers and with agents, with experts to bridge different gaps uh, between uh, different education. So, for example, when a farmer is compared to uh, standard education is when the farmer is less educated. And then when the developmental agent is an expert and feels like they're very educated and may look down into a farmer, we try to build different uh, board games or digital games to have this communication to I don't know, simmer down and have this, yeah, simmer down conversations. So we've been doing, doing doing those projects and we've been doing different uh, digital projects. Um, so the, the past few years have been very fascinating when it comes to AIs. And I think that's how uh, me and Abi uh, knew each other. And we've been doing, uh, we've met through uh, brainstorming sessions, thinking about how we can solve different problems, training each other and so on. Uh, 
Today, I'll be talking about uh, AI, but more in a practical session. Can I screen share if that's possible? You should be able to, no? Um, yeah, you should be able to. Okay. Uh, um, can you see it? Yes. Yeah. All right. Just to give you a context, like what is this guy talking about? Games when it comes to farmers. Uh, I can't see. So, all right. So, can you see this? Uh, something that looks like a jumbled up hexagonal thing. Yes. All right. So this is one of our projects known as Gabetag. Um, Gabata is like the African version of uh, checkers. It's it's it has this um, pieces that you get to move, but we had to contextualize it in a different way. And this is made for uh, to have. It's a role playing game for farmers with different lands, and when the government comes and for developmental purposes, they have to move a lot of uh, farmers. Uh, they would have some kind of discussion and then just move them. And after a couple of years, they would have a lot of conflict. So this board game was designed to have to help both the farmers, at the same time, the experts at land to understand how they should communicate with the farmers, how they evaluate. For example, these are pieces that you can move, these are villages, these are water supplies, and there are a bunch of pieces that you can move about trees and so on. So you can have those different conversations this is, we went through like very rural area with a bunch of farmers that had like 11, 15 ants, but they were very poor, torn up closes and so on. You could see how humble they are. And when it comes to the experts, uh, the way they looked at them, it was very different. And even the way we communicate with them was different. For example, we would have very fancy English when we taught them, even though they did not understand English. And those perspectives were there. This is another game that we used uh, to talk about uh, gender-based, sexual and gender-based violence. This is a board game, that this is a digital game that was made for Tibet uh, teachers so that we can experiment and talk about taboo issues in a subtle way and that they could understand what is sexual violence? What is, um, what is understanding it from a woman's perspective? How would you understand it? And how would someone feel uncomfortable in a scenario from a first person perspective. And a bunch of watershed uh, simulations so that we can visualize kind of uh, things happen in the land and so on and so on. Yeah, these are the things that we did when it comes to gamification and the elements that we can do and mobilizing the use to become more proactive, more engaged to have, um, yeah. With, with more positive impact, teach them through board games, digital games, having a good fluid communication without a drink, without a smoke, without any negative influence, without baiting, but um, to have this community-based approach and understanding one another and to have that engagement. Yeah. So when it comes to AI, yes, the segue into the AI. Um, so, all right. This is what we're going to learn. <laughs> so I think everybody knows um, Sesame Street. Yeah. So as a kid, uh, I loved Sesame Street. I loved Elmo, Kermit, uh, Big Bird. I, I just loved how we felt whenever they came up on TV. So uh, how we learned was a character would come up and they would tell us about the values, what happens in their life. It might be, I don't know which, which character was it. Uh, uh, do you know, the, remember that the, the one with the garbage, what was his name? Oscar. Uh, Grouch or Oscar, Oscar, Oscar yeah. <laughs> yes, Oscar. Yes, perfect. Yes, and then, uh, you would have that uh, a character would be 
going to Oscar, even if he's dirty, but they would listen to his perspective. We would have those values that were taught to us. And that would that would happen repeatedly in a way that we understood how people feel and we understood in repetition what numbers were. At the same time, we learned about values. That's how we learned. We learned with A for apple, B for bananas, C for corn, and so on and so on. And this, uh, so this is known as the, the, the second one. This is uh, an Ethiopian alphabet. I think it's one of the 16 uh, letters of the world, I guess. One of the 16 letters of the world. And we would learn it as ha, hu, he, and we had it as sounds. We had seven sounds and we had full. I don't know, but if you want to find out, Bahamas, it starts with this is Ba. This is Ba, just in case you, probably, you want to know how to write it in Amharic. Ba. And he is this. Ba he. Ma is this. This is the, the sound of Ma. Ma. And then uh, se is this. And then there are a lot of uh, different letters for different sound. For example, I know you know about, uh, I know you love uh, the relationship you have with Haile Selassie, but uh, I think, Abi, you have to help me out. Which which ah do we use for Haile Selassie? Oh, I know. It's the fancy one. Okay, it's, which one is the fancy like one? The R. This one here is in the middle. <laughs> which one? Is it this? I, I feel like yeah, it's this, right? The other side. If you go to the other side, underneath the ch, 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 ch. Chit. Oh, no, no, this is, yes. No, the other side, yes. right? Maybe this not. one, right? No, the other side. Mm -hmm. On the other side. This is the other side. No, the other side. Go this way. This. Yeah, right down. Isn't that the one right there? Your mouse is just over no. it. There we go. This is ha. This is ha. This is ha. Right? Ha. You're trying to spell Haile Selassie, right? Yes, yes, yes. So you're right. ha, I, I was you're going correct. To, uh, That's right. Yes, yes, she's correct. Yeah. Yes, you're good. I'm really bad at this. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so this was the way we were learning it. Somebody would have a stick. I would imagine somebody would have a stick and they would go ha, who, and so on, each letter. And then we'd learn it repeatedly. So... When it comes to artificial intelligence and when it comes to AI, the computer is supposed to learn in different ways by having a repetitive or having it a bunch of data so that it can uh, it can understand the patterns and recognize to, to know a specific thing. It can be given a bunch of different data and then the computer may decide by finding different patterns. The first one might be, computer might be given a bunch of data and then told, this is a cat, this is a cat, this is a cat, this is not a cat, this is a cat, this is a cat, it's not a cat, and then the computer would get to learn. So within machine learning and AI, there are different uh, processes or learning uh, procedures. One of them might be a machine learning. Machine learning is the one I just told you about. This is a cat, this is a cat, this is a cat having a repetitive way so that they understand. Natural language processing is like understanding what language it is, how I'm speaking and so on. Speech recognition is the way I speak and recognize between different spaces and then understand which, uh, which words it is and then defines what is that. When it comes to computer vision, we would have a bunch of images, understand the image, understand that and go through that reinforcement learning I, I will show you what is what a sample i'm going very fast because technically i'm showing you what tools we can use but i just want you to have just a basic understanding of this so we have uh pad so these are the three different ways the computer gets to learn so supervised learning is when we give it a specific title for a different object and then when you tell it this is a cat this is a cat this is a cat and then the machine that gets to decide picks up a dog and says, this is, is this a cat? And then we get to teach it, this is a cat. This, this is a dog, this is a cat. 
and then it goes through that process. We give it a bunch of cars and the computer understands based on uh, this type of shape, a, a car could be a, a bus, a car can be a truck, and then unsupervised with a bunch of pictures, but the computer gets to decide what kind of picture, what kind of object it is based on recognizing different patterns. When it comes to reinforcement learning, it's it gets to be, we get to provide reinforcement when it comes to games. We get to provide some kind of feedback to the computer in such a way that, uh, and then the computer gets to learn. So how would we use uh, different tools for different areas? Uh, when it comes to machine learning, since it learns about using patterns or repetitive things. This is used for most of the time about spam. We give it a bunch of images so that they understand what are specific patterns to learn. When it comes to deep learning, this is more about facial recognition, uh, speech, speech to text, all those uh, pattern recognitions on national, national natural language processing. It's about language, language translation, and so on. Uh, yes. So when it comes to uh, an artificial intelligence that understands a very specific area, when it comes to uh, recommending something to us, that would be a very narrow intelligence. When it comes to uh, very broad, when it comes to when we write about a specific topic, when you, man, we ask a lot of different questions and they tell us a lot, that is about a general learning or general intelligence. Artificial super intelligence, this is like a sci-fi thing. They would expect, we are expecting it to learn, to know everything, to understand everything. And it's expected to mimic humans, come up with ideas in different kinds of ways. I personally do not believe in this, but yeah. So I think you've been through this training multiple times. So I want to do something fun. So I'm going to ask you, what do you think, what, what fun things do you think happened about AI or machine learning or data analysis? Do you have any examples? If anyone, anything fun that happened in the past, if you remember something. Yeah, anything fun that happened with AI. Or something weird. Usually with AI, something weird has happened. Tesla having problems. That's Tesla having problems. Yes, a, a couple of times, but yes. All right. So, uh, I don't know if you know about this examples. Yes. So, do you know about the Target uh, supermarket? Or I don't know. We don't have Target, but I think you guys have Target. So, what we what is Target? In the United States, they do. Okay. We're familiar with it, many of us. Okay. So, so I, so I, I know about this information when I was taking uh, big data when I was in class. So big data was class, it would tell us about, we'd have a bunch of data and then we'd analyze what kind of patterns it is. We are, we get to decide what it means about the data. For example, if somebody wants to buy a computer, what age is he in? Uh, what kind of finance does it have? Those information would tell us what kind of computer that we buy. So one of the examples that was given is about Target. So this happened in 2022. So this girl, a teenage girl, uh, went to uh, Target's website and then she gets a lot of notifications. And the notification that she gets is about uh, a, Baby diapers, getting about um, what do you call this? A, a, a stroller. A stroller and just a bunch of items that they need for a baby. And the father was very, very angry. And he went to Target and accused him of saying that she's just a teenager and you do not need to give her coupons about babies. And then Target went through all their data and said, um, Yes, this is wrong, and so on and so on. But then the father get to find out after a couple of weeks that this girl was actually pregnant. 
And she did not even know she was pregnant. So what happened was, based on her search information, for example, when she searched about, she searched about shampoos, she did not like enjoying the shampoos that was she used to before, like perfume shampoos. She started using non-perfume shampoos. She started using non-magnesium uh, soaps and so on. I don't know what, what she used, but based on that search history and based on her different patterns and millions and millions of data, they get to found out that she was pregnant and she was actually pregnant. Wow. So after that, Target decided to have a different pattern whenever they send you uh, some items. So you'd have a bunch of items that you don't want to use, for example, when it comes to YouTube or any kind of subscription that me, there are a bunch of items that like, this does not make sense to me, but a bunch of them, they are perfectly aligned with me. This is to throw us off that they don't know us. Like you would have that understanding of, oh, they made a mistake, they made a mistake, but they did not. They just trying to throw us off. Uh, the other one was uh, Google Duplex. So this this was done for uh, phone calls. So, so anybody want to have a phone call, sign up, uh, schedule an appointment, and so on. But a bunch of people would use Google Duplex. But after some time, it was so good, people find it very creepy. It would mimic my voice so perfectly that it was so creepy. So Google had to stop it. Uh, this one is uh, Microsoft AI chatbot. So within a couple of uh, 16 hours, less than 16 hours, this chatbot was plugged into Twitter and then started becoming very racist. And then they had to stop it. They had to say like, no, 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 I, I gotta go goodbye. So if you see the last, the thing that said last, so uh, see you soon humans. I need to sleep, sleep and so on and so on. So the chat just, the AI just went away after a bunch of like racist uh, comments and so on. And the last one that was very scary for me was a Facebook research group. They had this two chat bots, uh, Alice and Bob, they negotiated different, uh, different items. And then after a couple of uh, statements, the bots started communicating in their own form. They started, they started negotiating in their own way, saying, I can, I can, I, I, everything else. And then the other one would say, I, I will do uh, uh, something. So they, they shortened the phrases that they used, but the computers started negotiating with one another. But the researchers did not understand the computers. So they had to stop it. So this is like, as you can see, this is like 2012, 2019, 2017, and 2016. This are like, some of them are like 10 years ago, uh, five, no, six, 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 six years ago, eight years ago. This is like an advancement that we were not expecting. We're talking about AI like now, or we've been noticing AI for the past two years, but this is an advancement that has been happening for the past 10 years minimum that was available to the public. And you can imagine what's the possibilities that that is going to happen in a couple of years. So this is just a fun, fun thing just to let you guys know. I feel like, um, so oh, what kind of AIs have you used so far? Just drawing it off. So I've recently started using Sorcerly, um, Chat, PDF, <laughs> Uh, perplexia, I kind of flirted with the other day. Uh, okay. Yeah, those would be sort of the three most recent ones I've been using. By that, I, I, I don't know the first one. What is it? Sorcerly. That's really cool because you can put in a word on um, like conservation and then it does like a library search for citations that align okay. with whatever you said. If you use too okay. much text, then you'll get source you'll get sources from like everything under the sun. But if you have okay. like more narrow sort of keyword search, it can really help you sort of build your literature 
uh, review. It's a cool, it's a cool tool. Sorcerer Leagues. Yeah. I actually paid for it even. Yeah. Sorcerer and Chat PDF, I just paid for it for the first time by paying for AI. And I was like, yeah, take my money. It's cool. Okay. <laughs> All right. I know Abi does not like using AIs to write something. I feel like he's very articulate. It was like one of the, in the videos, one of the videos was like, I don't like people using, everyone is articulate. Everyone is writing very well. That was the complaint. <laughs> oh no. I, <laughs> I just had my uh, reservations on some, some of the ways people were, you know, just using AI to just randomly produce text then, which kind of get, got annoying because you don't really hear the authentic voice of that person and it just it just became a bit um I don't know annoying you don't find that annoying that's right I was I was quite surprised I mean you can have perfect grammar and uh, words but if if you don't really hear that person and what they're really trying to say it just you just you just feel a bit detached Okay. There's something about um, I, I feel like someone there also agrees with that. I mean, she was like, man, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um so but trust me, I'm right all now, about uh right now using yes, those AI to is check my grammar when it comes to uh how it writes. But in the future. If AI knows enough about me, it can articulate anything I want, it can speak in any way I want, and no one would be mad this way with me, even if I send you an AI written email. So what do you think about that in the future? I may not even write something. I would just tell it to write something, and then it would feel like it, I'm talking to me. How would you figure it out? So I've been, been reflecting on this. I put together like a fairly comprehensive literature review the other day. I probably worked on it in about, say, five hours. Um, had I actually had to read every single one of those documents, it would have taken me probably like three days. Um, you know, so I was able to like so like move through huge volumes of literature in a way that I wouldn't by myself, I wouldn't have had the skills to do that. So I've been really reflecting on the power of that because I think it's really, it's powerful if you can like go through hundreds of sources in like a much shorter period of time, but I'm realizing it's, it's gonna change the way we learn. I think people who are inclined to sort of learning things or being critical, I think we'll be able to really use AI to support them in crafting documents or crafting thoughts or whatever. But I think it can, there's like an, a divide where you can, I think, use AI in a very smart and critical way, or you can like take a really lazy approach and try and get AI to do something for you. And in that case, I think it becomes very obvious very quickly. Even when people like just copy and paste and don't even change the font, you know, like, and all the stars from like the chat GPT like formatting, you know, you're like, come on, yo, like make me believe like you did something. So I'm kind of in that space right now. Okay. I agree. Like, I absolutely agree. Like, in some sectors, like, I feel like everyone is very robotic. And they just, just Google something and then just publish it, especially when it comes to LinkedIn. I don't want to spend most of my time on LinkedIn, and everybody's like an expert in a lot of areas. And you could see the flow and you'd be like, okay. But since I feel like it doesn't, look natural or they've been contextualized when it comes to different content. You have to find it very contextualized. And, and when it lacks that, I just end up not even su subscribing that alone reading the whole thing. Uh, I understand in that perspective, but um, it has helped me a lot when it comes to uh, doing a bunch of research, going through a lot of documents and 
uh, ideating whatever the document has and I wouldn't go through the, the whole like 100 page, 200 page document to, to talk about different things. But yeah, that has a thing. All right. Um, is somebody going to speak? Let me continue. I can continue. All right. So, so the AIs that we've used uh, intentionally or unintentionally are uh, YouTube. YouTube recommends a lot of AI stores. So a lot, lot of uh, subscriptions, like what, what we need to do, what we need to listen to, what kind of music you, we should listen to. Uh, locations. So whenever we're traveling, uh, the AI would like recognize if there's a, a car crash, any kind of traffic, and then it would divert us to one of the paths. I remember I was reading about something that even, I, I, I think in the United States, for example, if I have to get up at six in the morning and drive for like 20, 30 minutes and then be at the office at um, 6.30 or 6.20. If there is a car crash, the alarm clocks may even change the time based on the traffic, mm -hmm. based on its own learning and my traffic path, it would do that. That was surprising for me to know. Like there are, it, it is so intuitive that it would, my alarm would be before what I planned it. That was just very weird. But yeah, uh, when it comes to TikTok and how addicted most of the people are, when it comes to X, you do whatever you want to call it, we're extremely addicted. The new Instagram reels, just everybody's addicted. And based on how much data it has, every recommendation ends up being a good clickbait. Every recommendation comes becomes a hook for us to stay there longer and longer i think the best uh the best term that uh a netflix founder said is the biggest competition we have is not other platforms but sleep so they're <laughs> fighting against sleep rather than you know so uh that was very scary uh yeah well i've used uh google i've used cortana i've never used alex and siri but they are very intuitive. Uh, one of the conversations we have with among friends is even if our phone is switched off, for example, if I've never listened to, I have nothing against uh, Selena Gomez, but if I've never listened to Selena Gomez and if somebody ends up being next to me and talking to me about Selena Gomez, in a couple of days, I will get a YouTube recommendation of Selena, Selena Gomez, which was very scary to have. And you would feel off, like, why would this happen to me? And how much do they know? So, um, yeah, it's, it's, but we've used a bunch of AIs and they're very helpful. At the same time, it's very creepy when you, when you have it around. So, so for example, I, I, last week or two, I went through, uh, have you ever read uh, the, before I read what it, what it, what it, what is called? Something you have to read about, like terms of reference, of any application of the phone. So I'm using some uh, Xiaomi kind of phone and it's a Chinese brand. And then I went through it and yeah, it was a lot of talking, but I jumped and read through it and it says uh, if I'm outside most of the Scandinavian countries and a bunch of Europe countries, they can access my messages, they can access my images, location and so on. But uh, even when it comes to iPhone, uh, they have, the ability to slow my phone down for performance reasons, which most people don't believe, but for performance reasons, if that phone ages up, but in the rest of the, any other spaces, they are allowed to do that. But when it comes to Europe and a bunch of Scandinavian countries, they're not, which is a fun fact to know. At the same time, really weird, but yeah, this is capitalism at its finest, I guess. Uh, so the things that we did was, so I, I agree with what, what Nikita said. So what's happening right now is there are a bunch of generative AIs, a bunch of AI tools that are going to be changing our future. And we can find a way to go about them with using uh, traditional 
photography using traditional graphics designers and so on, but we can idea whatever we're thinking of in just an instant. And then that could help us out, whether we have small businesses, whether we're thinking about doing something small tasks or we're telling, thinking about telling a small story, we can use them. So today, uh, I don't know if you've used any of the tools, but I'm assuming that you don't. And we're going to do some simple generation. So this is like, when I heard it's like Bahamas and everybody looked like me. And I'm like, I was very fascinated to see people that looked like me, that lived very away from me and that spoke different languages, had different context. But uh, when I heard that you guys love uh, Imperial Haile Selassie, you have very, uh, that love for Africa. I was like, all right, why don't I experiment with a bunch of prompts so that you can showcase it. So this is just a simple prompt that we did for, uh, that I did for Great and African and Bahamas Partnership Image as a kid. And this is, no, they look cute, I guess. Like, just cute kids, very natural, natural oh. colors. When I saw a sneak peek of the image last time, we were just cracking up. <laughs> like it was so, it was so, it was so cute, and uh, how it just brought in the right features, you know, that like the iconic landmarks and even and the passport, the, passport <laughs> the burgundy passport, blue of the Bahamian flag. That's what got me the first time because I saw like the flag color and then I saw the Ethiopian flag and then I was like right. you see the Ethiopian airline and you're like oh <laughs> it's totally good yeah <laughs> yeah it's, it's very intuitive and it's, I don't know it's, it feels like um we could do a lot with this so let's do something so I know I'm pretty sure you've done some some kind of image generation but I don't know you come up with an idea and let's try it out not much for me, yeah. I haven't tried it much. You yeah. Really? I always wanted to try Dali. Yeah. I so, tried if I mean I tried Dali, but it was what did you use? Kind of. I so just tried Dali. I, I, yeah. Okay. I tried Dali, but uh Mid Journey was, but really it was good. asking for yeah. Mid Journey was really good. It's really good. But I have used like five or six emails to access Midjourney, the free version for like 25 emails. And my name is banned right now. I can't use it anymore. I'm like that bad for Midjourney. I've yeah, been the subscription issues. Yeah. Yes. So uh, the reason was. Because they only allow you how many generations? 25. Yeah. They only allow 25. Yeah. 25 images. But uh, I'm experimenting with the different ones, but I like them. So. I uh let's go with um, I think I had this. So this is Microsoft. Microsoft, I think they they this uses Dali, Dali 3, if I'm not mistaken. So what are you thinking? You have any prompts that you can come up with? Any suggestions? This is a American corner, Ethiopians and Bahamians in Sitting in American in the American <laughs> corner. Or an American, yeah, American corner or American space. Right. It's American corner. Space. It might buy as it though. Yeah. Wait, it, it might. American space. Maybe University of Bahamas. Uh, at University of Bahamas. Ethiopian oh, That 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 would be that that would be a tough one. Really. All right. Well, let's try it. Being American space. At the university, University right, of Bahamas, right. right? Yeah. <laughs> so, American space. Just to explain how we use uh, the generative AIs, for example, in my context. So, uh, so. Thank you, working. You see, it's it became very fancy. Oh, <laughs> very. Mm. <laughs> Look at the space flag. Oh, look, they got the Bahamian flag ish. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. <laughs> got you. This is really nice. 
I, I think umbrella. this is this is the thing that threw it off. American space is the thing that threw it off. So let's do this. Right. That's what it is, yeah. Right. Maybe say of the Bahamas. I, I think I would fix it. So um one of the things that one of the things that we do is um, when we organize events with the youth and when we want to communicate with the youth and a bunch of different sectors. And when we talk about, oh. yeah, <laughs> is this the yeah. campus that you have? Does it look similar? Is it way off? I don't know. Is that, and is it, there's nothing about that that's UB, no? No, I don't see anything. Yeah. Put in University of the Bahamas and see if that narrows it I down. I don't think it should change. I don't think it should change. Okay. Oh. But let's try it out. There. All right. So what happens is we have to engage with a bunch of uh, youth and a bunch of people. So we have to come up with uh, different posters. And communicating with designers, graphics designers, and uh, anyone with the content creation area, it's a tough one. It's a tough one. So what we end up to do is we have to write a bunch of prompts, go through the graphics that it feels like, and then we give it to the designer so that they can design something that fits within that realm. Because it's very tough to articulate whatever we want to a designer when it comes down. To it. So that's one of the ways that we do. So last week, let me tell you, Last week, uh, I had to, one of the, one of the things that we do is I, I work with a bike movement in Ethiopia. So it talks about like how positive it is. And there are a bunch of lanes, bike lanes, but not a lot of people start biking. So this is just going through what can we do about a bike poster that's like, it's been one year of a critical mass of just a bunch of people biking. So what kind of posters can it be done? So that the designer would understand. So when you look at the design, the whole feel of the graphics, it feels really professional. It feels well done. Just a bunch of elements that could be changed. But you understand what it feels like. Or you would understand what I went through. And it was just create a poster for a different critical mass that hosted 12 biking sessions. That was it. It wasn't that much complicated statement that I used, but it did it. I guess it's so then, interesting like uh you like so many i remember like in when we when i used to work in advertising we used to spend a lot of time creating storyboards to show the client what their ad final ad would finally look like and without storyboards this was very difficult to to tell those stories and the storyboards were actually done by sketch artists and then you have to sit down tell them what you, the storyboard is about. And oftentimes they might not get it right. Probably Maggie might know about this uh, in the advertising industry. It's uh, And then just over just a blessed cap couple of years now, this technology is available now. It just shows you how even sketch artists in the advertising industry could you don't necessarily have to replace them. It's just, as you said, you might show them an idea of what uh, the prompt, through your prompt, you might show them an idea and then they can perfect further perfect it. But anyways, just to share what I thought at the, at the moment. Yeah, that that's actually perfect. So one of the things that we did was, uh, so in one of the projects that I just showed you about, agriculture and so on, we had, a bunch of animators, like one of the best in town. They had to sit down with, uh, with everybody and come up with an idea. And they went through a, uh, a sketch and storyboarding and understanding the client. It was very hard to show. For example, what we went through was, the funny thing is, uh, when we do experience design, UX, UI design for the application, it would feel like the client would feel like the application was done. So since the application is done, they'd be like, why don't you just skip those? No, no, the application is not done. This is how it would feel like. But that explanation was very hard to have. Even the sketch, even the animation, what it's going to look like, we would have a, a very weird character just floating around. And then 
no, I don't want this. I, I want this to be replaced with something. We'd have those lengthy conversations just to explain what it is. So an AI has definitely helped us out in a lot of areas and image generation and so on. Uh, so I, I like this. I, anybody know how to use Adobe Photoshop and things like that? I haven't used it in a long time. So I don't think there's going the way to be used a lot to of, always uh, intimidate me. <laughs> always. It's one of the reasons I never really wanted to even do really? artwork in another way. Until Canva came though. Yeah. So now uh Adobe has created its own AI to generate different elements. So I don't know which one I used, but uh I don't know which one I used, but I end up using a bunch of them. So, what did I use? So these are all um, trial versions, uh, premium versions. Yes. The first. Yes, these are all trial okay. versions. Yes, this is the one I used, I think. So I look for an image. If I can look for an image, let me try to use an image. And it's it's very powerful, scary powerful. All right. Yeah, so, it looks so much better than the. Yeah. So I think like, this is this is this is not like it's not a good of a picture. Really. I think it could find something better, but something that's a bit challenging for the computer. I've always wondered about image generation. Um, and so this is actually pretty cool seeing how some of those, yeah, I know a lot of people are just creating them like every other second. Um, but it's cool to see it in action. Yeah. do some fancy cars I guess so what what this is supposed to do is like if you want to do some kind of poster for like a very big project and you see a bunch of people and you want to remove them you could just click and the AI would understand how to remove them it may not be as perfect as or as line that you might think but this is how I just remove the dude from this and yeah. I so in Photoshop what you have to do is select the guy and then select the different elements. Uh all right, select the different elements. Now can you see this? Oh wow. Hold on, wait, can you go back to the first one? Um. All right, let me look for the image on the other. Like, I, I can. <laughs> Sorry. Try. No, no, no. Don't worry, don't worry. I, I just did not want to do it again. It's, it, it, I want to move on. That's why. It's, it's okay. Yeah. So. Oh, I see. There were humans. Oh wow. Yeah. So when it comes to the designer, I had to. If I wanted to move this guy, I had to go to, uh, select, like line like a very it would be meticulously done and then i would use a content aware tool but i would have to replicate whatever this was but as you can see since it was a car it replaced the whole background with some item from a garage it was just intuitive and i told it to remove mm -hmm. the banner and then it made it into i don't think it removed the banner but yeah that's how we did mm -hmm. it So this would have been, this would have taken minimum of like an hour, two hours. Yeah. Just when it comes to designing it or like making it into 
whatever it looks like right now. But yeah. Uh, so yeah, this is like the AI tools that's that are right now. So what kind of jobs can it replace? A bunch of graphics designers could be replaced. A bunch of photo editing would be replaced. And it might, yes, it might be scary at the same time, but we can use them to, to do whatever we want, right? Uh, yeah, so this are, so I, I was doing one, one project that I was doing was, uh, so above, a lot of videos from YouTube are taken down on a daily basis by using uh, unlicensed music. So I, I, I noticed when Nikita sent me a video, she used an unlicensed, unlicensed music or an AI generated music in the background. I don't know if you noticed it, but it was AI generated music. But how fast can we do it? This is something I want to explore. I don't know if you've tried any kind of AI generated music and how fast it can. That's so interesting. I didn't know. It was just like the options that I had in the app to choose. From. Yeah. On campus, right? Um, so, okay. Yeah. They must... yeah. Interesting. So, uh, we're going to write another prompt. You guys are going to decide it. But by the way, I've done a couple. Let, let me try. Uh, it's locked in with me. But let me try. email address. I didn't even think about creating music through AI. So, yeah. Uncharted territories. What what are you thinking? Uh, can I can I share my audio? I feel like there's a way to share my audio. Um, Is there a specific song or genre that you want to put into the prompt? And I'm a piano version of Bohemian song. Afrobeats? Okay, so oh. Afrobeats was sort of one of the musical theme genre. Afrobeat with a yeah. uh, Bahamian? Yeah. What, what, what are you thinking? Afrobeat with Junkanoo. Do you think they would have that? Oh my God. <laughs> no. Rake yeah. and scrape. <laughs> <laughs> ah, what, what are you saying? Afrobeat with Bahamians? What, what is it? Yeah, I guess you could say with Bahamian music. Right. <laughs> Junkanoo with right. Yeah, it's no. <laughs> All right, Afrobeat with behavior. Oh, what the... right. Felt like I read, I wrote something like beef, but it's beef. All right. I'm... Should we get our dancing shoes or? <laughs> Rhythmic Bahamian Afrobeat. I wonder if you know, they have Bohemian, not Bohemian. So uh, I'll, I'll show you a bunch of them, but some of them, they even write uh, their own poem. They uh, just write some poem and then sings as some character. And then, yeah, it becomes a music that you can use. Sometimes it's, it would be some uh, just... Let's try the other one. I, I I I don't know. I have never heard of the Bohemian's uh, sound. So you you have you guys have to help me out. Is it relatable? <laughs> Is it not relatable? Let's hear the second one. All right. Let's see. All right, I think um, I, I can share the link. If you want to listen there, if there's a lag to it, I can share you. 
Uh, maybe drop the the link in the uh, chat. Yes, that would, that would be perfect. All right. We just made music. Afro Afrobeat Bahamian fusion. Right. Oh no, no, it's not. I wasn't sure if they were going to be able to pick up on, you know, because sometimes behavior specific code words or, or keywords, there's just not enough data. Right. That's not. So last time I tried with Ethiopian music, but it was a bit off. Mm. It was very off, but I understood like if I was a YouTuber and I was creating something very specific, Hmm. It would be very relatable, but I could just do it in a couple of seconds and then upload my new music or upload my video. I've sent you the link. Check it out. It works. I just checked the link and actually the sound is really crisp. Do you want to play it, Abby, from way, your Way, way better than I expected. Like, no, no, uh, check it check it out on your end you... so that I die. Yeah, that's because Zoom links might be a bit off. And your syncing time might be off. That's why. And it's surprisingly so crisp, and you can. Oh, oh that's actually surprising. They even have words. Yes. Do, do, uh, can you read the verse? Yeah. So, in the heat of the night, we came alive through the rhythm deep within our soul. The drums are beating, the voice rise, dancing to the beat, losing control, and so on. They even have words. Island rhythm. So this is Sono.ai. Huh. You can have so much fun with this one. <laughs> yeah, it's it's really dope. And uh there are a bunch of companies that are starting out for content creators so that their video will not be taken down from YouTube. Uh their videos will not mm. be taken down from TikTok. So whenever you want to create something that uh, resonates with a lot of people, you could just go through this. And this can be also be inspiring for a lot of musicians. Mm -hmm. So whenever a musician wants to be inspired or experiment with a different tune, understanding, and so on, like, I don't know. Okay. How about this? This might be Christmas. Hard for me. Pretty sure it's going to be weird, but yeah, let's try it out. So, no, I, I have not listened to it. I'm just sending it to you. Okay. I think you have access. All right, try it out. Before Charlie, Sammy, can I spawn in? In the air, there's a first divide. I'm going to stop sharing my sound just in case it doesn't disturb you guys. The echo I this is really interesting that you know like that's just a that's a non-cop that's a song that has no copyright infringement that was just created in a matter of seconds. Am I understanding that? Yes. Yeah. It does. Whoa. It was generated with the AI. Yeah. It's just yeah, for full content creators, it's been, it would be very it's it's very essential. And it's, it's so really no copy like so does that mean this this generated audio is um your copyright or like how does that work like how does the ownership work after it is the, after it's been generated uh, i think it's owned by the ai or it's an open thing i'm not exactly sure but so okay. i i was working for 
I did a small internship just to understand what the music AI industry is. So uh, thematic is this, uh, yeah, there was this some small internship that I did was, so what they have is they have around 100,000 subscribers and they provide you with generative music and uh, just anyone can just jump in, use the AI or use the music uh, as their own. And then, yeah, they can produce their own music. They can have it in their own uh, contents and so on. And yeah, you subscribe, I think, in thematic, you have subscribed on $20. That's their subscription model. And then there are a bunch of, uh, even YouTube has its own subscription. I think YouTube is also starting something somewhere. And a bunch of other uh, are starting with something. Yeah, something very similar. This has been really mm. insightful. I, I was not aware about very all that. interesting. Yeah. yeah, it was very fun to check out. Uh, yeah. And I don't know if there are a bunch of graphics here. Um, I don't know. There is this also. Uh, so. So these are the tools for rappers. So for example, if you know about Eminem, Eminem is known as like the best uh, rapper with the biggest dictionary. So this, this is used for rappers to have a simpler way of like Googling what, what word with, would match with another. And you can experiment with a lot for content. Yeah, this, this was, yeah, this was one to try. I'll send you all the links. I think the links are already in the slides, so you can try them out. Uh, something that I really liked was, um, so this is something that I really liked. So this is made by Facebook. So you just upload a picture of a, a, a drawing that a kid made, and then Facebook would animate it in however form you want. So think about it. Like, if my, if I could tell a story of my own kid, like if my kid do a drawing, and then I could just animate the characters and tell a story from my kid's perspective. This is very very fascinating. I think we can try it out if you want, but let's jump to something else as well. Uh, but yeah, there's also a Facebook I was experimenting on. Uh, CapCut. I think Nikita is using CapCut. For the video, I think. Yeah, for the for the recap of our video. Yep, yeah. So CapCut has become one of the best and dominantly video editing tools. You can edit videos. Transitions are very smooth. They're very simple. Uh, yeah, and it's it's owned by TikTok. It's owned by TikTok, which was very yeah, also very fascinating. And you can also do presentation with using Vism. I've never used it. It looked, uh, when I tried it, it looked very, yeah, very smart. So, yeah, in format of AIs. I think everybody has used uh, ChatGPT, Google Bard, and so on. Uh, I don't think a lot of people have used Google Bard. So I want to show you how to use Google Bard. Anyone use Google Bard? I, I tried it, and, and they actually make you wait on a waiting list, and then... Uh, what? I checked it out, and it wasn't really? as good as uh, ChatGPT, to be honest. Really? Yeah. Okay. I, I did not it's... know that. Yeah, like precision-wise, speed. Yes. And, yes. Uh, you know, devs of, the devs of um, response to the prompts you have given. I think ChatGPT is still... Yes, ChatGPT is much. Yeah. Yes, it's, yeah. it's very intuitive right now. I uh, personally, I've used, uh, I think I've used all of them. Yes, I've used all mm -hmm. of them. But uh, the thing I like Bart is it has access to my drive, to my own Google Drive. So I can just tell it to access a file that I want specifically. Wow. Tell it to read the document. I never thought of that. Yeah. yeah. Tell it to read a document and go through all, all, all of it and give me... So yeah, Nikita was using uh, some chat PDF, but you can give it access to your own document and review the whole document and give you a bit of detail. 
So yeah, I love the demo. So I'm going to use this one. So, and, and one of the research I was supposed to do, this was an African Falls. They gave me 112 documents to review and come up with, I don't know, understand what's happening specifically when it comes to uh, agriculture, specifically coming with the marine uh, biology and the, the marine area, what kind of fishery there is, what kind of impact it has. To understand it, there was just a bunch of examples that we used. It was some small assignment. So yeah, uh, let's try it out. I'm going to copy the name. So I'm going to do drive. Tell me something. So I gave it access to my Google Drive and it would go through my Google Drive, find this document, assist the document and give me, so I was like, I couldn't find it. And then, again. Try again. It's a bit buggy, but it does find it. I've used it before for the same documents as well. Yeah. So this is the document. So as you can see, the whole document is 112 pages. It might be very small, but it's a lot of doc a lot of things to go through and understand and come up with an idea to do. Yeah. So go through. So these are the key findings. So San Africa GDP is expected to grow by 3.3%, 2021, the recovery. Uh, policy recommendation, so I can ask it to go. Oh. Then we'll go through the document and then give me information about the specific topic. Yeah, give me you, can even, you can even ask it about a, a specific country's um, summary of that whole document. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And this is, this is fascinating, for example, like going through a research, understanding the policies uh, when you're planning for a grant or any kind of like, when you have to go through a lot of details, this kind of, yeah. So this is like chat GPT. You can just ask a bunch of questions and give you answers. But the fact that Google Bard has given mm. access to Google Drive and asking, going through my Google documents, any documents I have written or anyone I've written, I've added to the document or to the drive, going through it, right, reading it, understanding it, assessing it, and giving me pointers. This is, I don't know, This is this was really deep. I didn't have to read. It's making me dumber and dumber every day, but I like it. <laughs> See, I don't know about that. And I know we're almost done at, at time, but this is where I think like the true intelligence has this opportunity to be seen because your answers are only as good as the questions that you put in. Yes. Right? So if your questions aren't like solid, then it's going to... Um, you're not going to get the content that you want. So yes. I, I think it's very easy for to say, oh, AI is making us all like not smart. But I feel like it's the smartest people who are going to use AI the most efficiently. I don't yep. know. That, anyone comment? Jared's comment? What is the topic, the hottest topic at our time of the seminar? I'm sure the seminar we talked about this. And we had one of these, I think that we asked ChatGPT. We asked ChatGPT to write us a poem about the Bahamas. And it was 
it was insanely well done. Wow. And so, or to give us a history of the Bahamas and the historians of the movie alone were having the conversation about, I mean, clearly there were some inaccuracies because it's only as smart as, it's only smart as what we're feeding it, right? So, as a pedagogue, Nikita, I don't know how I feel about what we're gonna say is my name later on. I do think as long as people can critically process information, like asking it more complicated questions, I do think that the greatest measure of our intelligence eventually will become how creative our questions are. I think I, I, that, that, that might be, right now, we ask, can you get the right or wrong answer? The first question that popped up in my mind when he did this summary was, when you do it the old fashioned way, how accurate is the summary? If it turns out that it's 100% accurate, then I need to ask myself, what is the value now? What am I actually trying to get somebody to learn how to do? Filtering this information. And But then the education, the question, the fundamental question is, for what? Mm -hmm. We do this now. We make learning easier now. Does the brain suffer? Does it develop the same kind of infrastructure? And do we functionally make ourselves dumb? See, I don't know if it's, um, if it's making learning easier because I, the way I see it is that I can now process what I could have processed maybe four papers a day. I can do 20 papers a day. So now I have access to that much more information that I can sift through. I had a, I had a teacher once. I can't even remember where it was, but I remember he told me, like, it's not about, it doesn't matter what you can remember. You just need to know where you can find that information. And, I, and I, like, this probably was like 20 years ago when he said this. But it's never been more relevant than, than like looking at how like AI just allows you to just like sift through all sorts of different information. But then you still at the end of the day have to decide what you do with it. You have the what. This is where the question of birth. You have the what, you have the right, you have the information, you have the answer to it. But what did you use in the process? That's what I'm concerned about. Mm -hmm. I'm concerned about the fact that you do not have to struggle over those words and what it does to your brain. And I don't know. Do I you have not to struggle? Because the thing is, you still have to, in the summary, you still have to read the summary. It's just the summary is now just tailored to what you wanted. So maybe it takes away some little levels of comprehension. It should your food. And that's, still... what I'm concerned about. <laughs> that's what I'm concerned about. If we can prove that it's not chewing the food for us, because if we don't ever learn how to chew the food, if we never have to break down the fibers. If you always have, have to be in charge. I think the minute you think the AI is smarter than you, then you are the fool. Does that make sense? <laughs> okay yeah i mean Back i mean this is a very interesting conversation yeah i mean this at the end of the day how you synthesize the summary is the production of real knowledge intelligent knowledge that's where the intelligence for me is that's where the intelligence lies in in your synthesis of the this whole processed information and what you make of it but it's just the velocity of the learning might increase. But um, I, I I heard briefly about summary. I mean, so um, Madam, someone was speaking about summary, right? Like, I think that's I can I can resonate with that. Yeah, I think that's where the real intelligence lies in. How are you summarizing the information you quickly extracted, as Nikita you were saying? And as long as where you know, as long as you know where you can find the, those informations. But I, I think there's um, limited time now. Yeah, but anyone wants to, I, I think it would be nice to hear from the audience as well. Um, 
before we wrap up. And I know last night, in case you haven't finished your presentation, um, we'd, I would have loved to hear more actually, but maybe we can uh, postpone it to the next, um, on the event on February, the remaining part of the presentation. Okay. Uh, but if there's any questions, any feedback from the audience, that would be nice. Yeah, Let sure, me do a sure, of, sure. Uh, sure. Statements and then I will just, yeah. So I, I loved all the conversation that we just had. Uh, it's, it's going to be tough to recognize or to identify like how much we're learning and how we're going to use the tools. The thing is, this is a generative AI. So we need to understand this is a generative AI. This is, yes, we're going to tell it to analyze the document, but it's, since it's a generative AI, it's going to come up with its own idea and it's going to make a lot of mistakes. So we need to analyze and look at the document and see what it like sees what it's going to say and say, oh, this is this is wrong. For example, I was doing, I was reporting something and then I was using ChatGPT to report something. And then it gave me a number. For example, I was asking about uh, developmental agents. So I specifically know that around 90,000 uh, developmental agents. So I asked it how much uh, developmental agents are in Kenya and in uh I was going to say Bahamas, but thank God I did not. Uh, in uh, in Rwanda and in Ethiopia. So the numbers it gave me, so in Kenya and uh, Rwanda, I couldn't check, but in Ethiopia, since I had the data, it said to 100,000 people, and that was a mistake. I could identify the mistake and say, this is wrong. So the way you check all the information that you hear from generative AIs is you have to think of it like it's a fake, but you have to check for other resources. For example, you might use Google Bard and then ChatGPT to cross-check whatever it is. And then you can also use, uh, yeah, it did not show you what this is. So this is also uh, a chat, like it's using ChatGPT 4.0. This is Microsoft Copilot. It directly access all your files, ask us any information and so on. But the best thing is it, it gives you where it gathers the information. So you also have mm. to check what are the resources. And then you have to read all of that to, to yeah, to decide what you're checking. So there also this, this is, this was, where is this? What's happening? So Google has also made another one that's about searching. So if you want to search, so for example, everyone is using uh, search engine optimization to be at the highest point. And all the information we get from Google is in the first few pages. And all of the information, we're lacking a lot of other pages from second page to a bunch of like 90, 80s or 100 pages. We're missing all of that. So the generative AI, or the, uh, Google's AI is actually finding ways to get us the right answer at the right search. So you can use Google to do that. So that's also another one. Uh, but yeah. To, to give you a practical application so that you understand. Uh, so I, I was talking to a, a, do, a doctor in US that she's doing uh, in structural engineering and uh, she, uh, the company that she was working for used, uh, they would go through infrastructures, roads, they would take pictures and analyze the whole document and analyze and say, this road is being damaged this way. This needs to be modified. And they would go through a lot of data and report to the government. And this was their 80% profit. This is where they get their 80% revenue. So nowadays, a lot of people are just having cameras on top of their, uh, on top of their cars, drive 60 miles an hour, go through the whole road, take a bunch of pictures, analyze the data, report within a couple of days and deliver a detailed, a more detailed analysis for the government, telling them this is the road, this is the impact and so on. Now they're losing their clients day by day because that company innovated, find a way to solve the solution, use AI and deliver it much faster. So when it was the construction company, they had to close the road take a bunch of pictures for safety reasons, and then it would take months to analyze the whole data and then deliver it to the government. 
that was very surprising. She was worried, like, I might lose a job. You're a doctor, like, you have, like, a long way to go. You're one of the few people I had to motivate her. But this is the truth right now. So the thing is, I think I agree with Nikita what said, he said, you have to use AI in a very smart way to learn about it, innovate, do much, do things much faster, uh, have your own judgment, and then deliver whatever you're going to deliver. You have to do it much faster. So these are mm -hmm. examples that I was going to give you. So clarify, uh, use computer vision to detect fraud detection and so on, Amazon recognition, used the same uh, computer vision to detect uh, uh, different items when you buy different items. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, ICAD, this is their uh, term, this is their slogan, by the way, cancer can't hide. So they use computer vision to scan through a lot of x-rays uh, and then recognize what's happening. So, what I believe is this, this is the best case scenario. For example, this is a capture made of Emperor Haile Selassie to ideate what it would look like. So the designer, it's, it's a good friend of ours. Uh, so what he does is he's a good designer, a graphics designer and a 3D model. So he, I, he gave the prompt a caricature of Haile Selassie and it came up with something very similar. And then he had to end up designing more features onto it so that it would look like Emperor Rhinus and us. So he had the idea, the AI generated something, and then he modified more and came up with something. Uh, so anyone in the future want to do something bigger, these are like an advanced versions of the uh, AIs. These are like their own learning tools. So you can Google futuretools.io so if you want to know about a lot of AIs, there are like, uh, th these are like going to be hundreds and hundreds of AIs. These are not like ChatGPT or they use different uh, AIs to learn about different things. Um, this is also, uh, it uses a lot of programming, but specifically tailored to different people. There are different models that you can use to learn about everything and anything possible. These are very advanced tools you can use. You have to learn how to use them, but these are like uh, a turnkey solution that you can have in your RSL. Uh, wow, one more thing before I wrap up. Uh, there was one that I loved. So yeah. Um, so, so GPT has created GPT's store. So Using GPTs, using our own language, we can create different AIs. We, as in any of us, can create different AIs, use ChatGPT, we can give a bunch of data to the AI and have our own AI. We can sell that AI, we can use that AI to learn different things, and we can, yeah, we can do a lot more. So GPT has created a, a, a GPT store or GPT so that we can have different set of things. The other one that I love, this is also another one, UAI. So this is you create an AI using different data. So one of my favorites is BeastBot. Uh, so this guy, like, do you know about Mr. Beast? Any kid would know about Mr. Beast. Any teenager and anyone, would know. most people would know about Mr. Beast. YouTube star, yeah. Yes, so this guy is like one of the highest growing YouTuber ever. So if you wanna create a YouTube channel, how would, so this, this bot was created. If I was someone that wanted to create a YouTube video, who would be the best person to mentor? Me? <laughs> so they went through three or four videos of Mr. Beast giving interviews about YouTube giving interviews about captions, giving interviews about content, his perspective, they put it into this, uh, creating your own AI and created this bot. So you can technically ask the perspective from Mr. Beast a bunch of questions and then Mr. Beast or the, 
all the ideas he has given before or interviews he has given before will recommend you with detailed analysis how to build your own YouTube channel. It's wild. And this is beautiful to find that out. Wild. It's like just everybody creating different AIs to have to help each other out. This was fascinating. See. Like AI, it reminds me of going to the library. Like I love a good librarian. And back in the day, when you'd be like, "Listen, I need this, this, this," and they come back with like all the the, the references for you. Like that's what I feel like AI is now. Except it's personalized, and I don't have to wait in line. <laughs> yeah, this is it. I'm done. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Thank you so much. I hope it was informative as it was fun. It was really fun for me. Thank it was really everyone. fun. I really, really enjoyed this. Thank you so much. In fact, I, I feel like I didn't do good timekeeping. I would have allowed so much, so, some more time to ask Nathanael some questions around this thing because you really shared a lot with us. I I really enjoyed and learned a lot. Uh, sorry for the bad timekeeping. It's not your fault. I could have saved a little bit more time to ask you some questions. But if Nikita, can I still three minutes before we close down, just to ask? Um, oh yeah, yeah. One, one, one more thing. One more thing. One one more fun fact. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This is the last thing. Okay. All right. So, uh, what am I sharing right now? I don't know what I'm sharing right now. Share something. This is something fun that I just find out, found out. So you see this? The Instagram page? Looks like a fake. Uh... Is that real? No, it's an AI. It's an AI influencer. So this character, for mm. every post, this character charges $10,000 for every post. So this character was generated out of thin air. Somebody came up with her. And then, yeah. These are all the possibilities that we could have. So personally, one of the things that I'm really looking forward to using AIs right now is telling Ethiopian stories. For example, when it comes to kids, telling kids the Ethiopian history uh, in a more informative and a fun way and engaging them. And when I look at this, this gives me hope that some robotic looking character could be as a big of a fun influencer. It's just, yeah, fun to know, I guess. Wow, thank you so much for sharing that with us. <laughs> All right, um, Abby, I don't know if you have anything else to say. But... So one of the things, so I wanted to make this more personal now. And then because one of the reasons um, I was excited, Nathaniel, joining us in this AI Green Lab session is the whole, um, I really wanted to dive into his brain and, you know, share also with us what he also thinks about techies versus development workers. What do we need to know about tech people? As someone who who has been in the startup space, you know, incubating ideas, you know, I know you do a lot of work with uh, game game thinking, trying to solve um, social real world problems. If you just before we close, what is like if there's a, a takeaway you want to share with us, you know, in the in the context of the relationships between tech technologists, people who are in tech, innovating solutions in tech, and those or trying to apply um, to 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 address social issues and also developmental issues, what do we really need, need to understand? What what what? How do you see the the intersection of these two two individuals, if you might say, or like groups? Before, like I think that would be a nice perspective. I want to hear of before closing. Otherwise, I don't want to add any take any more time on my end. Um, we can close with that note and any questions from the audience. Otherwise, um, I'm good on my side. I'm, I'm sorry, Abby, could you clarify it? What's the exact Pardon? question? 
Could you clarify a bit? What is the exact question? I, I so, 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 as someone who's a game developer, like who's uh, applying game thinking and uh, solving problems, and and um, as someone in the startup ecosystem, uh, in the um, accelerator space, is there something like you want to sh sh um, uh, share with us on how uh, development work, people who are working in sustainable development or leading? Uh, CSOs, or it could be communities. What do we need to understand about tech people? How do, or what do we? Um, if when I say we, those uh, who are not necessarily coders or in the tech space, what do you? How do we work? Because the whole team of this AI Green Lab is about tech and um, social innovation, development, right? So how, how can these two things work in your perspective? Okay. Um, so it's it's a very tough question. I like it. Uh, so it is, but it's just in a light note, yeah. Like yeah. yeah the first uh, thing so that comes to your mind, especially. Mm -hmm. Over the past few years, I have I feel like I have personally transitioned from being a techie. Uh, becoming a, a social entrepreneur or like finding solutions. I, I'm, I'm having that mindset. So the issue is, uh, so the, the time I graduated, I was thinking in my head, like software is apps, apps, apps would solve solutions. That was my head. That was my mindset that I had. Like some AI would solve every problem or some tool would solve a lot of problems. But when it comes down to the, Ground when you meet a bunch of people, especially when it comes to Ethiopia, around 80% of the population being farmer and a lot of people being poor and a lot of people uh, like financially not able and not a lot of phones and not a lot of tech or not, not a lot of uh, what we call it, electricity and so on. The solutions that you come up with an app would have a different way. Like it's, it, it would be impossible for you to design an app that would solve majority of the population's solution problems. So you had to look at the ground and see what was around me. So that, that, that was the perspective that I'm understanding right now. So the best thing to do right now for the techie, for everyone in this uh, in the social entrepreneurship or trying to create a positive impact for the community to talk with the techie is that what solutions that they have needs to be, we need to articulate it in a way that a developer would understand it, a techie would understand it. Otherwise, the gap would still spread out. And we would see a lot of AIs or a lot of tools or a lot of apps that are not that are not usable. We just have them like, oh yeah, I have I have this. This would be a good prototype for me to showcase my talent, but this would not make any impact to anyone. But when it comes to the ground, the people matter. And that we need to show that people matter, the, our communications matter, uh, how we talk about it matter, what the problems is, understanding the core principles. I think, Abi, you know more about it. And when we have Moto Shaman principles, when we're trying to understand uh, persona mapping, understanding what the problem is, what the client is missing, having those deep down understanding would have a bigger solution. So when it comes down to that. So trying to communicate this would be very important. I believe that that's the way. Thank that's you so why much. I, Thank I feel you like really I've much. left the techie uh, view. That's why. Yeah, that's why I really want to ask that question. Thank you so much, Nathan. Um, so Nikita, I think we're sorry to take up um, much time more than we talked. I think it would be good to close now. Awesome. Uh, Thank you so yeah. much. Um, this was amazing. Thank you to everyone who's joined us in Zoom, who's watching the, the recording, everyone who's came out to the American space here at University of the Bahamas. This has been a wonderful opportunity to have our Ethiopian brothers with us in the Bahamas. And um, I hope we can do this again. And of course, I know it is so late or early for you on that side of the world. So thank you again, get some rest. And I look forward to applying what we've learned 
um, and continuing the conversation. Bye. Thank you, guys. Bye. All right. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye. See you.